deep beneath the ash-covered island of Vardenfell. The ancient sorcerer Dagoth Ur once rose to challenge the gods themselves. Now his legacy echoes across the lands of Solstheim thanks to the Ghosts of the Tribunal creation, which adds his mask to the game. Intrigued by this mysterious artifact, I decided to craft a build around its iconic visage. Are you ready to wield the power of the Sixth House? In preparation for our journey, we'll be taking the Mage Stone to level our magic skills 20% faster. Our first goal is to level our enchanting to 100, and I would be using the Staff Enchanter leveling exploit to do this. So I went to Murwatch to collect the Heart Stones and Unenchanted Destruction Staff there. Some people were having issues duplicating the staff after my previous videos on the Staff Enchanter grind, so here's how you can duplicate it if the follower method isn't working for you. Start by getting enough congealed putrescence to kill you. They each reduce your maximum health by 3, so you only need 34 if you have 100 health. You can get congealed putrescence from the Khajiit caravans and duplicate them by dropping them inside a city gate, ordering a follower to pick them up, then exiting and returning through the gate. The item will be inside your follower's inventory, and there's a high chance that a duplicate will still be on the ground. Once you have enough putrescence, get a piece of armor with a Fortify Health enchantment and return to Mirwatch. Place the unenchanted staff on a weapon rack, then make a save. Now look at the staff, equip your Fortify Health armor, and eat your putrescence. Then load the save you just made, and mash the activate button during the loading screen. When the load finishes, you should have multiple copies of the staff in your inventory. Then make a new save and repeat the process until you have at least 8 staves. Next up is Bloodchill Cavern. Ask the waiter to show you to your seat, and he will open the door to the dining hall. But the only seat we're interested in is this bench right behind the door. Look at it in first person with your hands raised, and activate it right after jumping. Upon sitting down, you'll notice your hands are still up while seated. Turn around so your hands face the wall, then stand up to phase through the wall. This allows you to access Bloodchill Manor's Staff Enchanter without doing the quest. You'll need to craft just 8 staves of flames to reach 100 enchanting since you took the Mage Stone. However, Mirwatch only came with 7 heart stones. You can find a couple more on this desk on the second level to craft the last staff. After that, I picked up the Vampire Gloves, because they made my fingers pointy like Lord Dagoth, and I took the Vampire Royal Armor for an upcoming exploit. To exit the room, perform the bench clip on this smaller bench next to the bed upstairs to fall out of bounds and be reset to the center of the cell. I wanted Soon's armor for this build, since it's the closest thing Skyrim has to Dagoth's belt, so I went to White Ridge Barrow and made a Mind Control Spider. I also entered the Sallow Regent Black Book for the Seeker of Sorcery ability to increase my enchanting power. Then I got the Staff of Paralysis in Snap Lake Cave and made a save. For a while I could have gone through the whole main quest to get to Sovngarde, I decided to load warp into Skuldafen using another character that was already there. This character also had enough congealed putrescence to kill them, and a Fortify Health enchantment to keep them alive. They ate all of the putrescence and looked at a load door in Skuldafen. Then I loaded my Dagoth save and pressed activate once the level bar disappeared. This allowed me to use the door in the save I was loading, and I was transported to Skuldafen after the load. I entered the portal to Sovngarde, then made my way to Soon. I let him start combat with me, paralyzed him, and made a quick save. I waited for him to start getting up, then threw a spider at him and picked his pocket at the exact moment the spider hit him. I could tell it worked if the spider made a hit sound and the menu came up. After doing this, I would give him the vampire royal armor, and he equipped it since its armor rating was higher than his own armor. And in his inventory was his armor for the taking. Then I saved and got out of Sovngarde by load warping into Whiterun. The next step was leveling my destruction skill to 100. For this, I needed to reduce my destruction spell cost to 0, which I would achieve with Fortify Destruction enchantments. Then I traveled to Hobbsfall Cave, and climbed these rocks near the entrance to travel backwards through the cave. I did this to get to the ancient tome chest that contains all the spell tomes from the arcane accessories creation. 
While it contains many interesting new spells, I decided to use Elemental Blast since it resembles the Dagoth's Wrath spell from Morrowind with all its effects. If you haven't heard of Elemental Blast, it has a reputation for being overpowered. To understand just how broken it is, let's compare it to the Fireball spell. They both deal 40 damage in a 15 foot radius, but Elemental Blast isn't affected by fire resistance. They also deal approximately 20% extra damage as burning or tapering damage. But Elemental Blast has a secondary shock explosion that also deals 40 damage. And it creates a hazard that deals an additional 15 shock damage over 1 second. So Elemental Blast deals over twice as much damage as Fireball, while only costing slightly more. Of course, cost isn't an issue in our case. The spell's initial explosion also benefits from augmented flames, augmented frost, and augmented shock, for nearly 3.4 times extra damage. The shock damage only benefits from augmented shock though, the spell's description is lying to you. The shock damage also isn't affected by dual casting, meaning you actually deal more damage by casting the spell twice. To level destruction for the augment perks, you can use Unbounded Storms or Unbounded Freezing, also from Arcane Accessories. Channeling the spell and then fast traveling far away grants experience as if you were casting it the whole time you were traveling. With a source of damage, we can now pursue the Mask of Dagoth Ur. Normally, you have to do a few quests in order to get it, but I'm going to skip the first one by going straight to Ashfall's Tier and using a bucket to clip through the North Wall. Doing this, you can walk out of bounds to enter the Tribunal Temple early. Of course, everyone is hostile to me, but that's what Elemental Blast is for. After dealing with them, I went to the Armory. You usually need to do some tasks for the Matriarch to get the key to the Armory, but you can get inside by moving your model through the door with an offhand power attack, then needing some Netch Jelly or Corkbow Brute to paralyze yourself. Once you stand up, you can walk forward to start the Ashen Heart quest. Jelly clip again through the next gate to read Erdin's note, and head to the Telmithran graveyard to find our prize. Kill Erdin, and retrieve the mask so we can finally... At last, a worthy vessel. And I have Sickliff to thank for preparing it for me. But what a fool he is. Just look what he's done to my beloved cultists. That ash sucker doesn't even know how to use elemental blast. But fear not. I can show you true power. I'll start by making a campsite. Yes, we're going camping, don't look so surprised. You'll also need a follower to keep you company. Camping alone is just sad. Set up your campsite at the foot of the cliff below Colbjorn Barrow. Use the campsite's crate as if you were going to bench clip. Then look at your follower and hold the activate button to enter the follower command mode. You can now walk straight through the cliff to get under the entrance to Kolbjorn. I learned this trick from Nazim's son on YouTube. Exit the follower command mode and stand up to upwarp to Kolbjorn's door. Once inside, run past the Draugr and jump down to the main chamber. Enter the black book room by jumping into the hole below the word wall. Then go backwards through the dungeon, pulling this chain through the gate. When you reach the back of the sarcophagus, jelly clip through it. Ascend these stairs to spawn Azidal, then return to the boss chamber. Dispatch him in brutal fashion and retrieve his mask from the ashes. To escape the barrow, clip out of bounds or fly back up with a bucket. Next up is Zakrisos. Head into Raven Rock Mine and perform the same follower clip using this chair. Point your arms north and start sprinting. Once you reach the boss chamber, exit the command mode and stand up. Then land at the edge of the water. Zakrizos may pose a threat with his lightning bolt, but you can use cover to your advantage. Finally, return to White Ridge Barrow to collect Dukon's mask. With all three, we will now take a follower to the Falkreath Jail. Give them a single lockpick, then order them to wait in front of the cell door. Pickpocket a guard for their key and unlock the prisoner belongings chest before getting arrested. In my case, it was from camping too close to a town. Tell your follower to move into the cell, and they will open the door for you. Now you can go back to the prisoner belongings chest and equip one of the acolyte masks. Exit the jail and speak to a guard to get arrested again, and repeat the process for all three masks. Once you've equipped the last mask, get arrested one last time and serve your sentence. 
This will cause you to equip every armor set from each time you were arrested. Discard all of your ragged clothes, then save and reload to display my mask prominently. Elemental Blast is now almost twice as strong, but we're not done yet. Be sure you haven't taken the Intense Flames perk like Sickliff did. If you have, just Legendary the skill and level it again with Unbounded Storms. Remember to take the Augment perks again afterwards. Now level your Illusion skill to 50 using Muffle, and take the Aspect of Terror perk to add about 80 damage to the spell, including the Taper. Aspect of Terror adds damage to the spell because the Intense Flames effect has the Magic Influence Fear keyword. But the 10 damage that would normally be added is boosted by the Augment perks and Acolyte Masks. The Azidal Mask doesn't seem to buff the Aspect of Terror damage if you already have the Intense Flames perk. But taking Intense Flames should be fine after you get Aspect of Terror. What's funny is that the extra damage from Aspect of Terror isn't affected by resistances. Even if the target has 99% resistance to magic, you'll always deal at least 90 damage. By the way, there's a Google Sheet in the description that you can use to calculate the damage. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go collect Kagranax tools. Nerevar is coming with me, naturally. If you want to learn more about the glitches used in this video, here's a playlist with guides on each one. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.